Uncharted 4, a single player game that was able to capture the attention of the masses when it was released on May 10th, 2016. Uncharted 4 is one of the few games in recent history that has gotten so much support from the gaming community with little to no backlash. Uncharted is a series of single player games in which the main character, Nathan Drake, searches for a long lost treasure while being hunted by the villains of the game who also want the treasure. Uncharted 2 and 3 were also extremely popular, with Uncharted fans constantly debating on which title is the best. Most people consider Uncharted 2 and 4 to be their favorite, but there are some Uncharted 3 fans out there. When looking at Uncharted 1 Drake's fortune, it falls flat on its face with lack of content and just an overall boring story and gameplay, but I do give Uncharted 1 some slack, taking into account that the game was released in 2007. While some fans absolutely love the utter chaos of crazy set pieces on Uncharted 2 and 3, Uncharted 4 takes a more somber, serious approach that I find more enjoyable. Let's take a deeper dive into Uncharted 4 though, because that's what this video is all about. Uncharted Uncharted 4 is one of my favorite video games of all time, and I'll be going over the story and gameplay, giving my opinion when necessary. The game opens with a quote from a fictional pirate named Henry Avery, quote, I am a man of fortune and I must seek my fortune. This is a tradition that has been used in previous games of the series and I'm personally a fan of it. Henry Avery's treasure is what we are chasing in this game, so it's good to be familiar with him early on. Uncharted 4 starts soon after the quote, and immediately you are straight into the action. You're on a boat being shot during a storm. Uncharted likes to have these type of intro where the player has no idea what's going on, and you'll find out how you got to this point later. I really like the boat chase opening, as it introduces the player to the controls and visually looks incredible. After the boat scene, we get a flashback into Nathan Drake's childhood, his struggles growing up in the orphanage, and how he would often cause trouble there. I don't see why I'm the only one being punished. Because you started the fight. He wouldn't give me back my book. I told you to leave those books in your room. You only have yourself to blame doesn't give him the right to just snatch it from me. Does that give you the right to start throwing punches? Later in this flashback, Nate's brother, Sam Drake, would be introduced into the game. Sam had not been mentioned before in any Uncharted game, so it's clear this was a new thing Naughty Dog thought of when developing Uncharted 4. It may seem like a major plot hole that Nate has never mentioned his brother before, but once we play through the opening and see Sam die, it makes it more acceptable. After the flashback scene with Nate and Sam ends, Nate flashes forward to him being beaten in jail. We later find out that he went to jail in order to find the cross that could lead him to Henry Avery's treasure. The guard in the prison named Vargas would soon help Nate access an area where he could go explore and find an empty version of a Saint Dismas cross. We are introduced to the main villain of the game after the cross is found, his name being Rafe. Now some fans of Uncharted consider Rafe to be one of the worst villains in the series due to his lack of intimidation and mostly calm demeanor, but I disagree. Rafe goes on to be one of the deepest villains in the series and has a true history with Nate. Even though Rafe isn't as scary as Lazarevich from Uncharted 2, I still think his character is great. Rafe is brought into the game right after Nate finds the cross, and a brawl will soon break out at the prison which I believe is the first fist fight of the game. I really do like the non-shooting combat in this game so it's always nice when they don't involve guns in every combat scene. After the brawl, Vargas, the guard who allowed Nate to explore the property, declares he wants in on the treasure if Nate, Sam, and Ray find it. They come to an agreement to split the treasure four ways and as they are about to shake on their agreement, Rafe stabs Vargas, killing him. Looks like we have a deal. Yes, we have a deal. And if you ever cross me at Jesus, that's that. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Do you want to find out? This is considered one of the biggest plot holes in Uncharted 4. There is absolutely no reason for Rafe to kill Vargas in a prison, it just makes no sense. If they didn't want Vargas in the picture, they could have killed him later, now when they are literally inside of a prison. Why does he do this? Because in order for the story to make sense, Sam has to die in the scene. After the killing, they all have to run immediately, as everyone in the prison is coming after them because Vargas shot his gun in the air before being stabbed. Sam attempts to make a long distance jump in order to escape and comes up just short, falling a ridiculous distance to the ground and the player is supposed to assume that Sam is dead. Sam, no. No, you hold on. Hold on. Sam! Give me your other arm. Come on, Reed. No! Sam! We gotta move. Come on, he's still down there. No, he's gone. Come on, the boat's just beyond the wall. No, no, I can't. Can't leave him behind. Nate! Your brother is dead. Either come with me or join him. Rafe and Nate continue running and eventually jump into the ocean and the title screen rolls. And I really do think this is a great introduction to the game.
The next scene is set 15 years later with Nate in the water diving for a salvage company. This is extremely dull to all the action I just played, and that's the point. This is some much needed time that the game takes to calm down. Everything seems normal when Nathan is sitting in his office looking at paperwork until a man starts banging on the door, asking to speak to his little brother. Nate opens the door a few seconds later and is shocked to see his brother Sam standing in the doorway. Now there is a little bit of a plot hole here. Sam ends up showing Nate the bullet wound that he has from being shot when they are running out of the prison. Sam was shot in the back but when he shows the bullet went to Nate, it's on his stomach. This is a super, super small nitpick, but I thought I'd point it out. Nate and Sam begin talking about their lives, and Nate makes it clear how sorry he is that he didn't confirm that Sam was dead. Sam soon reveals that he's in a lot of trouble, and that a famous drug lord named Hector Alcazar helped him escape prison after somehow surviving the fall. This entire story that Sam tells is a lie, but he is trying to get Nate back into his adventuring lifestyle, even after he closed that chapter in his life. Instead of Sam just telling Nate how he got out of the prison, the game allows you to play as Sam for first hand and experience the prison break. This allowed me to fully believe Sam's story on my first playthrough, even though it had some glaring plot holes in it looking back. So this is how I got out of prison. Well, you're not reading tonight. Samuel, come here. Listen, the guards, they're singing. Eh, well, they're probably drunk. Perhaps, but they are content. After Sam explains his story to Nate and tells him he needs to pay Alcazar a ton of money to avoid being killed, Nate is all in and wants to go search for Henry Avery's treasure. Now I'm not going to be going over every single part of the game obviously or I'd be here for hours, but I do have a small complaint. My favorite character in the entire series, Victor Sullivan, wasn't as involved as he was in Uncharted 3, and that disappointed me a little bit. The connection between Nate and Sully has always been great, and I think the game would be even better with more Sully. Either way though, Nate, Sam, and Sully attempt to find Avery's treasure. All well Nate Nate is lying to Elena about him being at a Malaysia job. Rafe and Nadine Ross will continue as the main villains of the game, as Nate is extremely mad at Rafe for killing Vargas and starting this whole mess. The graphics in Uncharted 4 are just beautiful, the best in the series, no question, and we should consider the fact that Uncharted 4 is the only mainline Uncharted game that released on the PS4, so the graphics should be a lot better than Uncharted 1, 2, and 3. Anyways, our favorite characters are on their way searching for treasure, but somehow Rafe and Nadine are able to find Nate and the crew, no matter where they are. This happens a lot in other Uncharted games and is done to help the story by adding conflict, but I'd like some more reasoning on how Rafe and Nadine just find where Nate is all the time. Uncharted 4 takes around 15 hours to complete, which I think is a good amount of time. Not too short, not too long. I want to fast forward a lot in this story though and jump to when Sam gets caught in his whole lie. This is arguably the best part of Uncharted 4, because the player most likely doesn't even know that Sam's whole Alcazar story was a lie to get him wrapped up in the treasure hunting again. When Rafe confronts Nate and Sam, telling Nate that he was the one who got Sam out of prison, Nate is furious, understandably so. He left his entire life behind because he thought Sam was in danger, and finding out that he had been lied to must have been rough. And when the lie is revealed, I thought it was a great part of the game, but I can understand if others feel differently. If you were expecting a powerful drug to show up during Nate, Sam, and Sully's adventure to spice things up, I could see how all that being a lie is frustrating. But if you were like me and didn't catch on to Sam's lie, I think it was a positive. <clears throat> oh, you can go ahead, I'm listening. I just... I... Uh, you want to find Avery's treasure? Uh, we'll help you find it. In exchange, I let you live? Yeah. That and a small cut. <laughs> the gauchos on this guy. Just enough to get him his freedom, okay? His freedom? Nathan. Yeah. He did hard time. Our... Time. And the guy who broke him out, Hector Alcazar, he owes him a lot of money. Whoa, what the hell are you talking about, Nate? Hector Alcazar died in a shootout in Argentina like six months ago. I'm the one that got Samuel out. Oh. Wow. What did he tell you? Sam, what kind of story did you cook up, Alcazar? Really? You lied? You lied to your baby brother? We're wasting time! Just a second. Thing is, Nate, I never stopped looking for Avery's treasure. I just kept running into these dead ends. <laughs> you know? 
And then I hear that our dear old Samuel Drake, an authority on Avery, is alive and somewhat well. There was no breakout. I bribed the prison warden, and your brother, he just waltzed right out the front gate. He spent the last two years tracking down a second St. Dismas Cross. You know what? He did it all with me. Uh, oh, yeah? That's bullshit. Oh. Sam, care to refute? Nate. Oh, Sam. Oh, Jesus, no, no. Listen, Avery's treasure was ours. It was always ours. I left my life for you! Elena, Nate's wife, also joins in on the action when she finds out Nate has been lying to her about a job opportunity in Malaysia. At first, she is disgusted by Nate's actions, but she later forgives him, realizing that exploring is a part of who Nate is, and taking that away from him isn't right. As Nate continues to get closer to finding the treasure through clues and exploration, he finds Libertalia, an ancient pirate colony near Madagascar that Henry Avery kept all of his wealth. Nate, Rafe, Nadine, and all the others are here trying to find the treasure. And you may be asking yourself, why don't they just work together to find the treasure? They could all split the treasure and they would still get a ton of money each, but I think it's more complicated than that. Rafe has always been envious of Nate and how he's been able to become so successful from nothing. The treasure isn't just about the money for Rafe, he feels he needs to do this on his own or he will never be recognized as someone who overcame challenges. Eventually, Nate and Rafe meet each other on a burning ship with all the treasure on it and Sam is stuck underneath a piece of wood and Nadine points a gun at Rafe, leaving the ship, saying that neither of them have learned their lesson. Henry Avery and Thomas too are both very wealthy pirates in Liberty. Bertalia, and both their corpses were right next to Rafe and Nate, showing that they killed each other because of greed. This foreshadows what could potentially happen to Rafe and Nate if they decide to go down the same path. You and your brother, though. Right from the start, you took advantage of my generosity. You tried to cut me out, and it's high time you learn. What are you doing? Now you give me your gun. <laughs> Nadine? I won't ask you again. You are being profoundly stupid right now. Look over there. Nadine, stop screwing around. Jesus! I said look! Okay, it's a couple of skeletons. So what? I don't know as much about history as you boys, but I've got a pretty good idea who those two are. Well, enlighten us. It's Avery and two. They killed each other. Good for them. What's the point? Everyone obsessed with this treasure gets what they deserve. Rafe and Nate break out into a sword fight over the treasure, and this is the true boss battle of Uncharted 4. Rafe's attacks are strong and it definitely takes some trial and error to dodge all of his attacks. You go back and forth for a few minutes and would kill Rafe by having tons of objects fall onto his head. So Rafe is dead but Sam is still stuck right next to Nate, wedged in between a piece of wood. It almost seems that Sam is about to die because the entire ship is going to explode, but Nate has the great idea to just blow up the entire ship now so water can get in and he can free Sam. This plan works and they swim to safety. Nate and Sam didn't get all the treasure but they were able to salvage some, and I'm sure they went back and got more, the game just didn't show it though. Uncharted 4 is the best game in this series due to its attention to detail, story, gameplay, and graphics. Uncharted 4 is the first complete Uncharted game, not lacking anything, and I wanted to make this video to look back at Uncharted 4 all these years later and give the game the props it deserves. Usually in gaming, people always say that nothing can beat the original, but in Uncharted, I think it's the opposite. Objectively speaking, Uncharted 4 is the highest quality game in the series with the best story and true character development. I really wish I could go back and play Uncharted 4 again for the first time without knowing anything about the game. If you're watching this video and have never played Uncharted 4, I highly recommend it. The game is a blast and has received some incredible reviews. If you have played Uncharted 4, I hope you found everything I did say interesting, and there is so much more I could have gotten into story and gameplay wise, but then I will be making a 3 hour video. Make sure to comment down below who is your favorite Uncharted character, it could be from any of the games, I've gotta stick with my guy Sully, but I'd love to hear your opinion. I I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you all next time.